All right. Hello, and welcome to my review of the Nitro Circus 116 scale monster truck by Basher by Hobby King. It's a pretty complex name. It's a pretty simple small truck. It comes with threaded body shocks. It has independent suspension, and it runs two 2S batteries for 4S combined. It is brushless, and it has a wheelie bar with that funky shock there. And it comes with four large monster truck tires, which are a short course style, which means that the inner diameter is larger than the outer diameter, which is mainly for looks. All right, let's have a look at some actual driving footage of the truck. It really is a scaled down version of its larger Nitro Circus monster truck, Big Brother, and it does handle accordingly. To me, it's, uh, it's quite a lot of fun to drive. It's just action-packed. It's pretty maneuverable, and with the four-wheel drive that it has and the high voltage that it is running, it gets over a lot of stuff, like you can see there. Um, due to its short wheelbase and its good steering, it's very maneuverable. You can make very tight turns with it, uh, which adds to the fun in the um, And you. Th You'd think that it would have a lot of rollovers with the classic monster truck design, but it actually does not. It actually stays on four wheels quite well. One thing that isn't great is the oil in the shocks. It could do it a bit heavier oil in the shocks because it is a bit bouncy out of the box. To me, it's, yeah, it's just a fun little truck. Um, it really feels like a monster truck. I like the look of it when it runs around. It has that nice Nitro Circus body, which, you know, Nitro Circus isn't a thing in Europe, but I just like the way that it looks. And that body has actually held up quite well, even though it's pretty thin plastic. I don't even think it's Lexan, but uh, it, it does quite well. All right, so we've seen how it handles on this loose dirt. Let's have a look at some forest running now. I do like the way that it runs in the forest, and I do like running in the forest in general. Um, one of the reasons why this does it was because it gets over most of the terrain really well, and that again has to do with the four-wheel drive and the torque. You can see here these leaves are no problem, and it's really fun to drive it like that. Another thing that I like about this truck is that it doesn't have a ton of top speed, and for that reason you can really just stay on the throttle. It has to do with the handling as well. Uh, so yeah, you can see it here, so you don't have to kind of point and shoot to be able to have fun with it. Yeah, and this demonstrates some more of the handling. This is my bend test. It does really quite well for this kind of vehicle. It carries quite a lot of speed through the turns, and it doesn't even lift a wheel. And in general, it gets quite good traction with those soft rubber wheels it has. You can see it there. All right, here you'll see a wheelie. The wheelies are a bit weird. They're very short. It doesn't really stay up there. It comes down. There you go. But uh, it's still fun really to do, sharp. and it has that funky wheelie really bar with the shock, which uh, functions quite well. Here you can see the tight turning radius, which is an asset for this truck. It makes it a lot quite maneuverable, and I really do like it. Here you can see the top speed. It doesn't have a ton of it, but for me it's enough for this little truck. Okay, let's talk jumping. It jumps really quite well, actually. Or, well, it takes off quite well, and it flies really well as well. Um, and you're able to correct it in the air as well. The only problem is that it doesn't land very well. See, even if you land it on all fours, it still has a tendency to bounce around, and that again has to do with that thin oil in the shocks. Uh, Alright, let's... yeah, you can see it there. And here I do land one... yeah, there we go. Alright, let's talk about durability. So, it's been very durable on crashes and impacts for me, you can see it here. I think that has to do with the good functioning bumpers. That's what I attribute that to. A problem that I have had is with the plastic gears. If little rocks get in there, they do tend to grind up. So I wouldn't run it too much in gravel. And another issue that I've had, which I'll show here, is that the drive shafts do pop out, which is annoying because you have to go and look for them, etc., etc., and pop them back in. Now there's two fixes for that. Either you can put some fuel tubing in both uh, drive cups, which stops the drive shaft from being able to pop out, or you can get the upgrade CVDs from Hobby King. Now that'll cost you a little bit of money, but they're nice upgrades anyway. So uh, yeah, you may as well get them and that solves it as well. See there, I popped it back in and uh, it's ready to go again. Because the bendy plastic. All right, so my final thoughts on this. Would I buy it again? To be honest, 
if there would be better part support, so not just one source, which is Hobby King, I definitely would. I really do like this little truck. I like the way it handles. I like the way it drives. Not now, kitty. I'll cuddle with you later. Um, and uh, I like the way it handles impacts. Um, there's just a few flaws like the plastic gears, and it would be nice if they had metal upgrades, which I think you do, but they're really hard to find. Um, so then I definitely would buy it again. But because it's a bit iffy, and right now, for instance, we're waiting for a second version, and you can't get any parts for it, or you can get the ones they have in stock, but everything that's out of the stock you can't get anymore. Uh, that's just a bit annoying for me. All right, so I'm going to compare it to a couple of vehicles. I already compared it to the Savage Excess in my Savage Excess video, where I think I would buy the Savage Excess over this. Um, the reason being part support. If part support would be equal, I'd definitely buy this because this is so much cheaper. This was 90 bucks. The Savage Excess, all in all, cost me probably around between 300 and 400 euros. Um, so there's so much value here. All right, I'm going to compare it to another Hobby King truck, which is the Monster Beetle, which I have a mini LST body on, but don't pay attention to that. Um, I can definitely tell that there's much more quality in this truck. I think the plastic compound is better. This is it's harder. Um, there's no oil in the shocks. For instance, the compound of the tires is, is, is harder as well. Uh, it doesn't look as good. And even though it has kind of a low slung design, I think the handling is about equal. And I really like the 4S uh, voltage on this one. It makes for so much more torque um, and very long run times. It actually is a very another really nice feature of this truck. Um, this, I think, is cheaper. I think it's around 60 euros. So, but uh, I definitely spend the extra 30 euros on this guy. Also, looks-wise, I, uh, I just like it better. Okay, another one. Also a cheap four-wheel drive truck. This is the WL Toys Vortex. Um, so far, this thing has actually been okay for what it is. I think it's about 50 euros, but it's smaller. Uh, again, it doesn't have inserts in the tires, which this does have. The suspension is super bouncy. Lots on the nice circuit as well, but still this suspension functions a lot better. It has much more suspension travel. Um, it has the 4S voltage. And it's just a better truck. It has a wheelie bar. I feel that this is just more thought out, more balanced. Even though this truck isn't bad, uh, it's pretty durable actually. It has some problems with, uh, with the pinion, which this does not. So to be honest, I think it's a nice little monster truck. I just have a problem with the part support, which I find quite important these days. So all in all, great truck, great design, nice idea. Just get part support up. I hope other Manufacturers will start carrying it, so we'll have more sources for parts. Okay, that's all that I had for now. Hope uh, this was helpful and fun.